Amen. And so uh, this is what the Lord said to me as I was praying about what to preach. The Lord said the title is, this is my last drop off. Can you say that to your neighbor? Neighbor. neighbor. This, this is, is my last my drop off. Drop off. Amen. Amen. This is my last drop off. Amen. So I'm going to take my time to go through this. I'm more of a teacher than a preacher. Amen. Amen. So, uh, amen. We're not here to be excited. We're here to be taught. Amen. The word of God. Praise God. So we see here Peter and John. They're going up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Now this hour is very strategic. Uh, if you read and kind of study a little deeper, it says being the ninth hour, but this hour was actually in our time known as three o'clock, right? So they're going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three in the afternoon. And a certain man, lame, from his mother's womb was carried. Now when I read that uh, a couple of days ago, the Lord really, um, and I'm, I'm going to use this text to speak prophetically, the Lord really opened up something to me. He said, lame from his mother's womb. And the Lord said this to tell some of you. Some of you have been birthed, but you can't walk. I'm gonna say that again. You've been birthed, but you can't walk. What does that mean? In John chapter three, the Bible says that you must be what? Born again. So some of you have come into salvation but your walk with God has been crippled. You're born, you have all the capacities, but your legs are paralyzed and you can't move. You, 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 you receive Jesus Christ, but you can't walk out holiness. You know what I'm saying? You receive the things of God, but you can't love your neighbor. It seems like walking has become a big problem for you. There has been almost like a limitation from you to move from one place to another. Does that make sense? Because the Bible says that from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And some of you right now, you're just like this man. You have not experienced any movement in your life. And you've been blaming the enemy when it's not the enemy, but it is a condition in your spirit that has you paralyzed. But God is saying tonight he wants to free you so you can walk. Because we walk by faith and not by so imagine this man, he's laying from his mother's womb. He's born. And when he was born, he, see, the thing about it is, y'all just gonna have to go down the imagination road with me for a second. The thing about it is I can imagine him being born and looking at other babies, they don't, they don't walk, right? My son at seven months, he doesn't walk. So he's thinking he's normal. But then when he gets to one, then when he gets to two, he looks and he sees everybody else walking. He says, hold up. Something's wrong. Why is it that everybody else is walking, but I can't walk? And some of you are in a place right now where, where the people you started out with, they seem like they're further than you. Yeah. The people that you started out with, they seem like they're more anointed. And it's like, God, what is it? What is wrong with me? Why can't I move forward like sister so-and-so? Why can't I move forward then like brother so-and-so? It seems like I'm stuck and everybody else is passing me by. But God's going to restore your movement. Say, God, God is about to restore my movement. Restore. So watch this. He was carried. Verse 2. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Somebody say beautiful. beautiful. Now this is interesting to me because he was dropped off at a gate called beautiful, but he was never, nobody ever thought to drop him off in the temple. They always dropped him off outside the temple. See, they will never drop you off in the right place. They will always drop you off right almost to where God wants you to be because they don't want you to be in the place that God wants you to be because you'll have independence. Yeah. You'll be able to have your own legs. Yeah. You'll be able to do your own thing. Yeah. They want to 
to drop you off where you can just live with just enough and not fulfill what God has for you. So this man is sitting there at the gate. But the gate is open for everybody else but not him. You ever seen an open gate but you can't go through it? So imagine this man, he's sitting at a gate and it's not called any kind of name. It's called beautiful. There's nothing beautiful about this man's situation. And I just heard the Holy Spirit say this. Some of you, you hear beautiful things around you, but you ain't experiencing nothing beautiful in your life right now. Wow. People are saying, God, go make a way. Yeah. That's beautiful. God, go heal. That's beautiful. That's, that's, that's what the beautiful gate represents. The promises of God. The, the access of God. God's going to do this and God's going to do that. But you, for whatever reason, you're stuck behind beautiful. You can't get to beautiful because the people that you depended to carry you into beautiful always dropped you off before you can get there. You know what this means? You cannot depend on the arms of flesh yes. to get you to the place that God has destined for your life. Yes. You want people to fulfill your prophecy when God said, I am the only one who can fulfill yes. the prophecy yes. that I have for your life. Yes. You're depending on those people at church and depending on those friends at work and depending on family members. They're not equipped to take you into purpose. Yes. Because I remember when he told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you I ordained you that you may be a prophet. Watch this. If he can ordain you, can he carry you there? Yes. So why are you trying to make other people ordain you into a purpose that God already ordained you before they even got there? Yes. Why are you trying to make people fanatic you into who God has called you to be what he already anointed you for what he's already called you to be? And if you just wait a little while, somebody turn to somebody and say, just wait on the Lord. He will strengthen your heart. But we don't want to wait. We want a quick fix. We want people to carry us to that place. We want people to carry us to that place. And God is saying, I'm going to let you sit right there until I give you strength. Yes. Some of you in a season right now, God is saying, I'm not going to allow them to carry you in. Because if they carry you in, they're going to get the glory. Yes. If they carry in, they're going to say, it was my husband that did it. If they carry it in, you're going to say, it's my wife that did it. If they carry you in, you're going to say, it's your pastor that did it. He's going to get you to a place where you're all alone outside the gate. Yes. So that you can get what God has for you. Does this make sense? Yes. And so in verse uh, verse 2, yes, and a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms. Now I looked up this word alms, and this word alms mean money. Now can I ask you a question? What is it that a man that can't walk gonna do with money? I'm gonna ask that question again. What is it that a man or a woman that cannot walk, can they go to the store and buy some groceries? Can they, can they, can they, can they purchase a new iPhone? Yeah. No. Why? Because they're lame. So what, hear, hear the revelation of the Holy Spirit is saying. They put him there, watch this, so he could be their fundraiser. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. They put him there so he could be their fundraiser. What do I mean? They knew he couldn't go to the store and get what he wanted. Yeah. They knew if he laid him there and he got $500, that the only way he will be able to eat is if they came and cut the money for themselves. There are people that, watch this, they are, they are comfortable with carrying you as long as they can get something from you. They don't want you delivered because they're, your dysfunction is their fundraiser. Your dysfunction blesses them. You watch this, your dysfunction makes them feel better about themselves. They said, we'll carry you, but you're going to have to make us some money. Go out there, don't ask for food. We got that. See, and that's the problem. Some of us, when we get in situations where we don't know how to get from one place to another, we depend on leeches to feed us. We depend on people that don't really mean us no good to feed us because, because, because when they... It's the only way I can get through. Well, I know he's abusive, but he's, a, he, he's the only one that will love me. Well, I know that pastor's not really living right, but I can't really go to nobody else's church because my grandmother was at this church and my great grandmother was here. I know, I know my friend. He wasn't. He's not really there for me, but but ain't nobody else gonna be a friend to me because I'm crazy and he knows all my secrets. He gonna tell anything about me. See, you will put up with abuse because you don't feel like you deserve better. Oh. 
you put up with all sorts of leeches and people pull it from you because you don't, you don't feel like God can get you to where you need to be by himself. But I just heard the Holy Ghost say, you got to get out of being loyal to your users. You have to become, you have to become disloyal to the people that use you. Yes, that man provides for you, but he's beating on you. Yes, that church gave you an usher board position, but you know you ain't supposed to be there. But you're so comfortable with the immediate benefit. You don't see the pain that you endure. And you cover it up. Well, I know, you, you know, I know, you know, you just, I'm just trying to make it. No, ain't no trying to make it. With God, the promises of God are yes and amen. He did, watch this. Jesus did not try to die. When he died, he said, it is finished. So if he finished his assignment, he finished his assignment so you can finish yours. And anything that is blocking you from finishing and anything that is keeping you in a place of incomplete, you got to cut it off. Yes. Yes. Cut it off. Yes. Those friends that just want you to dream about doing drugs and whatever else and all that stuff, that's an incomplete person yes. because you're beyond that. Yes. Come on here. You got to see your value and you have to be surrounded by people. Yes. That's willing to see the value that God placed in you. Yes. So this man wasn't just being carried. He was being used. Mm. He was being used. Ain't nobody going to carry nobody just for free. Yes. That don't happen. Yes. They carried him to ask for arms. So that he can bless them. So he can help them. Because watch this. The same people that carried him had to carry him back somewhere. Yes. Huh? They had to carry him back somewhere. So watch this. They had to carry him to get money. And, and, and when they came out, they would carry him to go back to their house. See, but I, I just want you to say this right now. God uh, is breaking, is breaking every, spirit every spirit of false dependency. Of false dependency. Yeah. The is Jesus. Yeah. And the people that he allows you to depend on. Yeah. If they don't pass that security clearance for God, you don't need to be dependent on those people. So, so, I said this, the fact that the gate was named beautiful is ironic because this man's was, situation was nothing but beautiful. It was ugly. I can only imagine the torment the man had to be in seeing the beauty all around him, but never being able to identify. Some of you, you see blessings, but you can't identify it in your life. You see holiness. In everybody else's life, oh, she's a great woman of God, but you can't identify holiness in your life. It's a struggle. Like Paul, he said, the things I want to do, I can't do. And the things that I, I shouldn't do, I find myself doing it. You can't even identify with holiness. See, the problem is we preach holiness, but some people don't even have a starting point to even identify in their life what holiness is. So holiness sounds foreign to them. It sounds strange to them. But watch this. That's where you get picked up. Because watch this. I'm going to slow down. The man was laying down in the dirt. And the only way he was able to, I watch this, identify when walking is somebody had to pick him up. I'm going to say it again. He was in the dirt. All he knew was sitting. All he knew was being carried. But the only way he was able to figure out or finally experience this strange thing called walking is somebody had to pick him up. Watch this. Some of you, you're in the dirt of depression. And the only way you'll be able to experience joy is if the hand of God picks you up and pulls you into joy. Some of you, you're in the dirt of fear. And the only way you'll be able to experience peace is if the hand of God goes down into that place and pulls you out into his perfect love. Some of you, you're in the dirt of sin. And it's like you want to come out that dirt, but you don't know how to come out that dirt. But the hand of Jesus, even now, is stretching out to you and is pulling you out. Because watch this, the dirt is a prison. The dirt is a prison. Watch this. So he couldn't identify. He couldn't identify with, with beautiful, beautiful what? All I'm experiencing is dirt. You, you talk about beautiful. I'm seeing people go to this gate called beautiful, but ain't nothing beautiful about where I'm at. Ain't nothing beautiful. 
comfortable where I am. And so, let me ask you this question. Have you ever been in a place where you are trying to erase or cope with the negative labels of your life? You trying to get rid of the problem yourself. You trying to, you doing everything you can to get rid of the problem. And it seems like the more you try to get rid of the problem, the greater the problem grows. Because watch this, you can't get rid of the problem in your own flesh, even if you try. That's why some of you, I gotta say, you will fast 10,000 days and that problem will still be staring you in the face. You go to church 10,000 times and that problem will still be staring you in the face. Because unless you give the problem to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith, you will always be stuck in the trap of the problem. He is the only one that can pull you out of the problem. That can pull you out of the label that people put on you. So watch this. He got into a place where he just stopped crying for the solution and started crying for survival. When he was first placed there, he probably was crying. Can somebody help me walk? Can somebody help me walk? After a while, he said, you know what? I'm just going to cry for money. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I, I'm just gonna get comfortable in this low place, and I'm just gonna cry for something, because apparently I'll never be able to walk again. And some of you have given up, you have given up your original cry because you don't think wow. it's gonna give you an answer to your original problem. Yes. So you fake it till you make it. Come on. Your original problem is alcoholism. But instead of instead of dealing with it and saying, God, deliver me from alcoholism, you just cry for some good music and hide behind good music. Not dealing with a real problem. Yeah. Because you don't believe that he's a God that can deliver from alcohol. Yeah. You, 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 your original problem is generational curses. But because that demon keeps beating you up over and over and over again, you give up and say, you know what, I ain't even going to... Rebuke no demons today. I'm just going to be comfortable in my family dysfunction. I'm going to deal with crazy auntie and crazy uncle. As long as I'm going to work and paying the bills, I'm just going to chill. You don't got comfortable in the problem. So watch this. You watch this. You, I heard that, Holy Ghost. You have replaced your true prayer request with a false prayer request. Just to survive. Just to survive. Your real, your real prayer request is, God, I'm about to lose my mind. But because it don't seem like the answer is coming, you come, you come with another prayer request. Well, Lord, whatever your will is for my life. Yeah. And you go and you start saying that prayer request and find yourself in a mental institution. Yeah. I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Many of us hide behind false prayer requests because we don't believe that he is able to answer the original one. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you that God is able to answer that hard thing that you've been fighting for for years. He is able to save. He's able to heal and deliver. Amen. If you believe it, say amen. amen. So I just heard the Holy Ghost say this. Don't compromise your prayer request. Amen. Because you feel like I can't answer it. Don't compromise your petition because you feel like I'm too small to deal with that demon. I am the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And if I deliver those in the Old Testament, if I deliver those in the New Testament, what kind of fool? What, let me tell you something. David looked at Goliath and he said, you uncircumcised Philistine. Who are you to challenge the Lord? I'm here to tell you, you gotta look at that problem and say, you know what? You're not gonna keep me in a place of just being hush hush. You're not gonna keep me in a place of just compromising and saying, I can keep living the way I'm living. I can keep doing the things I'm doing. I'm coming like Goliath to cut off your head. I'm coming like Goliath to knock you down because the God that delivered the ancestors is the same God that can deliver you. The God that delivered Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Daniel, and, and Joseph, and all these people. You think he can deliver you? Yeah. You think, watch this, Solomon said something so wise. He, he made some foolish decisions, but he said some things that were wise. He said, there is nothing new under the sun. Do you think you're the only one that has gone through what you're going through? Oh, God. Great. God has been tried in the very area that you're experiencing many times before you even got here. And if he could deliver them back then, why can't he deliver you now? So I heard the Holy Ghost just say this, no excuses. No excuses. Yes, you're in the dirt. Yes, you're being carried there every day. But you must push to walk. Because he's the God of the impossible. Somebody shout impossible. Impossible. So he's sitting there. He's asking for money, 
And all he knows how to do is beg, help me, feed me, carry me. I can always tell somebody who was given up on the promises of God because they changed their prayer request from God, do it for me, God, I believe you can do it, and they go into a beg mode. But I'm just trying to get a couple dollars to get from here to there. Wait a minute. The promises of God ain't just a couple of dollars. The promises of God is exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or think. You done gave up on the word. So you think God done gave up on you? No. You have given up on the word. You have counted the word as if it is not able to perform that thing which it said it was going to do. But I need you to lift your hands and say, tonight, tonight. I restore my confidence, I restore my confidence. In, the in the word of God. If he spoke it, he got to bring it to so watch this. Lay him all his life. And here's the thing. He was begging people going in the temple. In other words, he was begging church folk. Yes. Isn't it something when you're placed in a position where you have to beg your brothers and sisters in Christ yes. and the people that you think are supposed to know love one another, you know, that scripture. The people that you think are supposed to know, you know, give. The people that you think are supposed to know, be, you know, be loving and kind. They're the hardest taskmasters you ever want to meet. Amen. They're worse than the worst sinner yes. in the world. Yes. You, you, you ask them for five dollars and they give you five lashes just for the five dollars. You understand what I'm saying? So he was in a place where he had to beg people that didn't care nothing about his condition. And sometimes the people that don't care something about it, it's going to sound crazy and people are going to get mad at me, but I have to obey the Lord. Sometimes the people that don't care about your situation are right up in the very house of God. They're your, they're your quote unquote brothers and sisters. But when they're tried, then they can't help you. They can't do nothing. So he's begging church people, and, and I can imagine, I just got to go here because the Holy Spirit's pushing me here. I can imagine uh, a brother by the name of George. Child, that beggar at the gate, he begged me today again. Can he get a job? You know, they can get him a wheelchair so he can get, he can provide for himself. Child, this child. See, 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 see. That's the problem. That's the problem. He's stuck in a place where not only is he begging people that don't care nothing about him, but he's begging people that should know better. But he's also yeah. begging people that when they do get something, they talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's in a place where he got to beg people that don't really care for his soul. Yeah. You remember that man that was uh, uh, beaten up and laid in the Jericho? Yeah. The Bible says the priest, pastors, wow. passed by and did nothing. Yeah. Yeah. The Levi, worship leader. Passed by and did nothing. But a good Samaritan said, hold up, there's a problem. Let me get him a room and let me put some oil and some wine in his rooms and let me heal him. Sometimes the people that you think are anointed and supposed to be there for you are not. <coughs> and sometimes, watch this, we, get, we have the audacity to get angry at God. God, why are you allowing in my life? And they're going to just persecute me. God said, because I want you to know I don't want no other gods but beside me. You can't trust your pastor. You can't trust me. You can't trust no flesh. I don't care how much they come up with Shandai and whatever else they do. You can't trust flesh. You can only trust God. It's the word. So, he's in a situation where he's making church people. Okay? And watch this. He should not have had to beg in the first place. You know why? Because, because the people who carried him wasn't even giving him money. I want you to hear that. The people who was carrying him didn't give him money. The, watch this. The people who carried him carried him broke. Some of you depended on people that will carry you broke. They ain't giving you nothing, but they'll carry you because they want something from you. They'll carry you in your sin as long as you give them some. They're not trying to pour nothing in you. They just want to take something from you. And some of these people have the answers that's carrying you. But they don't want you to have the answer because they don't want you to see who you truly are in God. Because they can't use you no more. They can't use you no more. You're not, you're not advantageous anymore. You're not an opportunity anymore that can be seized on. And so... He, 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 the people who carry him wouldn't give him money. Be careful of people that carry you broke. 
Mm. Watch this. Be careful of people that are comfortable with you being in your sin. Mm. Be careful of people that are comfortable with you being in your in your derision. Because if they're not uncomfortable with the need that, that needs to be addressed, they don't have the heart of God. Right. Let me tell you something. God was so uncomfortable with the sin problem of man, he got out of heaven, came uh. down to earth, went on the cross, was beat, bloody. Come on here. Face this figure, beat in prison all night, beard plucked out. Come on here. Crown the thorns on his head to fix your knee. And if not, if people who claim to follow Jesus don't have that kind of heart towards making sure that you're in the place that God has for you, you got to let that go. Because those same people, watch this, that will, yes, Lord, those same people that will carry you broken will be the same people that will watch you die. Yes, yes. They'll watch you die and blame you for your own problems when they have the solution, the word of God, the whole time. Yes. I don't know who this is for. I'm trying to stick to my nose, but I just, you hear the Lord say these things. So watch this. Uh, uh. They had a command from God to give to the poor anyways. So they weren't fulfilling their duties. And watch this. He was begging, okay, I said that already. He was begging for money, something he could not use unless he was carrying a shop or purchase. He was begging for something he had to use in dependency. Okay? So, so watch this. The man, I want you to read this with me. Go back to verse 1. It says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Somebody say three o'clock. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Verse three, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. So he was laid there every day at a certain time. And I, and I just, I'm sorry, when I read the Bible, I just use my imagination sometimes. This man was asking for money probably from early morning till three o'clock. And, and watch this. I can't prove this scripturally, but just follow me. He was asking for money early that morning till three o'clock. Chances are, if you're still asking for money at three o'clock, you probably didn't get any money all day, right? I mean, it, that's just possibly, right? He possibly didn't get money or watch this, didn't get enough. And I hear the Lord saying to tell some of you, some of you, you're not getting enough of what you've been using to survive because he's coming to give you what you need. Let me rewind that. If that man had gotten what he wanted, he would have been so desperate to look at Peter and John. So apparently there was still some type of need he was experiencing. God will leave you in that place. He'll make your plan not work. Just to put you into an encounter with what you really need. You think you need love from bad relationships? Well, you need the love of Christ. So he'll make every relationship worse. He'll make every relationship go bad. You think you need, you think you need a, a, a prosperity from money schemes and all this stuff? He'll make all those schemes go bad. Just so you can see that he is prosperity. You don't get what I'm saying? He will make your plans look dumb. And break down everything that you've been using to, find, to function in your dysfunction to let you know you need to be healed. You need to be delivered. You need to be set free. You need to stop living behind the mask that everything is all right. So he told them, he said, he said, Peter and John came and he said, silver and gold, I have not, I don't have what you want me to have. I have what you need. I don't have what you would like for me to have to make life normal, to not confront the real problem. I got what you need. You don't have a money problem. You have a direction problem. You don't have a money problem. You have a walking problem. You don't have a, a problem with money. You have a, and some of you, like I said earlier, you're hiding behind one problem because you're afraid to deal with the real problem. But tonight, God wants to deal with the root. You're not dealing with lust. You're dealing with insecurity. And until you deal with the root, then you'll get rid of all the branches of fruit. You're not dealing, you're not dealing with anger. You're dealing with being rejected by your mom and daddy. You're not dealing with fear. You're dealing with that bad experience that happened to you years ago. And since that time, you've not been the same. God is saying, I'm not coming. See, and that's what most folk do. They deal with the, the, the exterior problem. And they talk about the exterior problem. But God said, no, there's more to it than this. 
There's something in there that nobody sees, but I, the Lord thy God, I see it. And I'm coming to address it today. I'm coming to deal with it today. Watch this. I'm coming to make you make it before me. You can't hide no more. You can hide from pastor. You can hide from, from sisters and brothers. But I'm coming to deal with that real issue. I'm coming to deal with that real problem. I'm coming to deal Because watch this. Your sister and brother, brothers will prophesy about your issues, but they'll never prophesy about the root. But I will send a voice of revelation that will be able to say, you know what? I'm coming to deal with the real issue. I don't know why I heard the Holy Spirit say this, but say this with me. God, God get real with me. Get real with me. Yeah, I, I'm tired of hiding. Come on here behind the fig leaves like Adam and Eve. I need you to see my nakedness. I need you to see that I'm abandoning your voice. I need you to see that I'm abandoning your commandments. I need you to see that I'm abandoning the true relationship. You. I'm tired of being a camouflage Christian. I'm tired of hiding under a false Deal with the 
don't want you to make the dirt your home. You be too comfortable in no places. Why? To impress people? How's that going for you? Why are you impressing people and hiding your real self from people? And you're dying on the inside. And I want to get real. I know this is not about excitement, but it's just the word of God. Some of you know people that have done this for 20 and 30 and 40 years. And then some hit them. They snap. And you know what? Them same people, they were trying to impress. Look at them and say, what happened to her? Huh? Sure do. Because they don't see the real enemy. They don't see the real demon. They don't see the real issue playing in their heart. But you got to say, God, you know what? I don't care if they do see it. And if they do see it, they want to talk, talk about me fine. But I need you, my brain part of me is to set me free. I won't cry until I can't cry anymore. They'll try to come and be quiet, but I'm not going to be quiet. Stop, baby! Have mercy on me! Yeah. 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 I'm not going to be rescued from this place. Yeah. 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 And watch this. Say, God is a God. God is a God. Come on, say God is a God. God is a God. Of acceleration. Of acceleration. So watch this. In God said, in chapter 3, I'm almost done. In chapter 3, verse 6, he says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I not. I don't have what you think you need. I have what you really need. But such as I have, give I thee. And watch this. You don't have to pay for what I got. It's free. Watch this. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the right name, yes. not the names you've been running to the solution to bring solution to your life. The right name. Sometimes we run to all kinds of names. We run to the name doctor, and that name is good for certain things. We run to the name lawyer, and that name is good for certain things. But you need a name that can deal with a problem that money can't fix. You need a name that can deal with a problem that no one can see. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Wait a minute. Did he teach him how to walk? He said walk. I have a problem with this. This man has never walked. He has never walked, yet you're going to tell me to walk and don't teach me how to walk? Some of you, you think God got to teach it to you, but when you really deliver, he ain't got to teach you nothing. When he stretches his hand to you, you're going to just act like you've been a pro at it the whole time. See, you're trying to live right. No, you're not truly delivering. You're trying to be happy. No, that's not true deliverance. Because when the hand of Jesus brings you up, he brings you past education and brings you to a place of perfection. He did not have to teach that man how to walk. Watch this. He put the learning in his feet. He put the school in his feet. His power not only strengthened him, but it taught him what to do. So, the Bible says, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up. He surely could rise up and walk. Didn't teach him nothing. And he took him by the right hand. He pulled him. So of you tonight, you're going to be pulled. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Why did he do that? Because God said, I got to restore you where you stand. You've been looking too low. I gotta show you your identity. I gotta show you. Stand in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free, Galatians. I gotta make you stand because you've been lying down too low. God is restoring your stand tonight. And lifted him up and immediately, somebody shot immediately. Immediately. His feet and ankle bones receive strength. Now I love this. His feet is for direction. But his ankle bones is to hold him up as he moves forward. See, watch this. I just heard the Holy Ghost say this. Some of you, you, you've allowed God to heal your feet, but not your ankles. You've allowed God to anoint you. And so what? But watch this. You watch this. You're, 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 you're dancing in one place, but you can't go nowhere because nothing ain't holding you up. God don't just want to give you your feeling back. But he wants to give you a structure where you can live for him from. So watch this. Immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And did it say he did it say he walked first? No. Verse 8. And leaping up. So when he stood up, he didn't stand up slow. He laid down and he leaped up. Why? Because God wanna, because when God set you free, 
straightens you out. Because yeah. see, you got to understand, the reason why he leaped up, because his bones was crooked. Mm -hmm. So God had to stretch some things out of him. God had to cause some things that was old and rusty to be put into a place of new. Because the Bible says, behold, I do a new thing. Because God ain't washed it. I heard the Holy Spirit. He's not going to use the bones you sat in to make you walk with. He got to restore your bones. Why is it he told Ezekiel, go into the valley of dry bones. And, and if you pay attention to Ezekiel 37, there was two breaths. There was a breath in the bones. Because he said, I don't want to use the old bones. I want to bring new life into the... Let me tell you something. Some of you got life on the outside, but your insides is dead. Yes. Your bones is dead. Your structure is dead. But God want to breathe life into you. Yeah. Not just on the outside, but on the inside. That's why he said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Why does he say it twice? Because he want to resurrect your inner man. Yes. So you can live righteous as an outer man. Yes. Yes. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians, he, give, he strengthens us in the inner man, in the spirit. So watch this. He leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. And here's why I stop. Walking and leaping and praising God. You know the beautiful thing about God is the place they tried to stop him from getting into. He didn't crawl into it. He didn't beg into it. He leaped and walked and praised God into it. The place that was that, that the enemy tried to cause him not to be able to get into. The place where his users couldn't carry him into. That place, that same place, the temple. Somebody shot the temple. He was able to walk in it by himself. Not by might. Not by someone carrying him. No by power. But by spirit. So you know what? Some people can, can fix their situation, but when your situation is fixed by God, it is fixed by the Spirit. Yes. So the only way you'll be able to live it out is by the Spirit. Yeah. The only, watch this. He wasn't walking in his strength. He was walking by the Spirit of God in his legs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, if, and watch this. If he ever came out of covenant with the Spirit of God, he'd go right back down. Yeah. That's why some of you, the God give you miracles, and you betray the Lord. You walk away from the Lord, you wonder, why is my life going topsy-turvy? Because he's letting you know you can't function like other people function. Mm -hmm. What I gave you, the yeah. only way you'll be able to function in it is if I'm in it. Yeah. But when you forget me, everything connected from in me leaves you. Yeah. I am the vine. Yeah. Come on here. You have to abide in him. You are the you are the branches. If you come out of the vine, guess what happened? You dry up. Yes. You can't bear fruit. Yes. So the only way you'll be able to walk is if you're connected with him. Because he gives you the strength to keep moving each day. Some people, they get their strength from other stuff. And it's not really strength. But how many of y'all here tonight, you get your strength from Jesus? If Jesus don't wake you up, you ain't waking up. If Jesus don't give you the strength to be able to go on that job, you can't go on that job. If Jesus don't give you the strength to be able to do what you're supposed to, you can't do it. You don't make it by book sets. We thank God for that. You don't make it by connections. We thank God for that. You make it only because of the presence of God. Like Daniel who prayed three times a day, the Bible said he had an excellent spirit. You know how he was able to get that? Because he was connected to God. And the enemy recognized him and said, hold up. Yeah, yeah. He don't got no natural talent. His talents come from God. Yeah. So the thing I got to do is I got to make him not pray. Because if I make him not pray, then I can beat him. Yeah. I, I want to break that down a little bit. His enemies recognized that the only reason why he was the best in the land was because he prayed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what they said out of jealousy is, okay. I know your secret is prayer. So if I stop you from praying, then I can get over you. Yes. Some of you got to recognize that your secret ain't what other people do. They got to go to school and do all this stuff. No, that ain't, that ain't your secret. Your secret is Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, those that know their God will do great exploits. Yes. The secret is knowing God. Yes. Not knowing people. That's good. Yeah. Knowing God. Knowing God. That's why the Bible says in John chapter 17, and this is eternal life to know Him. Amen. Yes. Eternal life in heaven, that's a product of eternal life. Eternal life is knowing Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Did y'all yes. enjoy the word today? Yes. 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 Yes.
glory to God. Can the word speak to someone on tonight? Hallelujah. 